At CII, Cleaner Air Better Life Initiative, we are committed to cleaner air and a better quality of life for every citizen. We work with industry leaders, government and the society to bring about a positive change on ground. One of the major sources of air pollution in rural India is crop residue burning. Every winter, paddy straw burning imposes an immense health burden. Burning results in smoke plumes that travel across Indo-Gangetic plains. We need solutions that leverage this agricultural waste, create new economic opportunities and incentivizes our farmers to give up the practice of stubble burning. Our report, Actionable Solutions for Waste to Wealth from Crop Residue in 2021, focuses on this. Solutions using agricultural residue in building construction are fast emerging and Agricrete was highlighted in our report as one of the actionable solutions for rice straw management using surplus rice straw. Invented by an Indian startup, Green Jams, Agricrete is a carbon negative building material made from mixture of paddy straw, lime sludge, steel flakes and other industrial wastes. Although it is less explicit, Agrocrete also addresses emissions from conventional brick production, which yet again is a major source of air pollution near urban centers and on the overall value chain of building construction. Unlike a conventional brick manufacturing process, it does not require firing and hence coal or other polluting fossil fuels are not used. As rice straw is converted into a construction element, it evades air pollution and what's more, it ends up becoming a carbon neutral or carbon negative building block. Green Jams was started in the year 2017 by Tarun and Varun Jani with the vision to build better buildings with carbon negative materials and solutions. Tarun is also a member of the India CEO Forum for Clean Air which is a dedicated group of business leaders committed to action on air pollution. Let's hear more about this innovation directly from them. Built environment is responsible for more than 45% of global carbon dioxide emissions. These emissions come from the construction material and the space conditioning requirements. In 2019, we founded Green Jams to create a beautiful carbon neutral built environment. Today, we employ more than 40 people across our factory locations and the headquarters. The government policies are very beneficial to a lot of these, uh, a lot of these innovations and startups. Uh, it starts from the as simple as an early stage funding wherein they have just an idea in terms of how they want to build something out to going to the scale of bringing the particular product to the market. The Startup India Seed Fund Scheme, for example, gives, gives startups funding for bringing, the early, uh, for bringing the innovations to the market in the early stages. Without having revenue, it's just the early prototype stages. And I think we are very fortunate to have such a, such a strong government support and we're hoping such more activities keep going on. To foster the transition from an informal economy to a formal economy, I think government has to play a key role in terms of educating the consumers, making them understand what the requirements are. Having stronger and stringent regulations make a whole difference in terms of how your business is perceived. There is improved confidence from the customers, some of the investors become more open to investing, and it also makes a very good investment opportunity for foreign countries to come down. And that is something that can be largely driven by government and ensuring that there are right policies in place which can foster such transition from the informal to the formal economy. Recently, because of the shortage of coal, there was a lot of issue in terms of power outages and us having a constant reliance of power to ensure that production is in place. We're very happy to say this, that agrocrete blocks can be manufactured through 100% renewable energy. And we're actively in working towards ensuring that happens as well. Now, Brickens basically have very poor standards in terms of working conditions. They are, they are called to be one of the worst conditions to ever be uh, working at. Their hands are directly used for making the bricks, they are in the muddy conditions all the time, it's very unhygienic and that makes a lot of difference in terms of their health as well. Our factories are completely uh, built on state-of-the-art technology. The factories are within industrial sheds which is in the co covered areas. The equipment is completely automatic which allows them to have dignified working conditions. They're able to also manufacture more blocks, ensure that they're able to match up with the standards and also get perks such as insurance and other health benefits to ensure their family as well as them are taken care of. Next stakeholder in our business is the consumers and the builders. 
Typically, when it comes to construction material, there's a lot of wastage that comes during the transportation as well as at the time of manufacturing, as well as the time of the construction. Now, because of our blocks, we're able to minimize the wastage that happens during transportation. Even at the time of construction, there is a lot of dust that gets created in typical bricks. We've also been able to avoid some of the wastage that comes from the construction process as well as the dust that comes through the manufacturing process. With the use of larger blocks, we're also able to reduce the consumption of sand and cement, which also cause a lot of uh, soil pollution as well as water pollution in some of the construction locations. The last stakeholder in our, at our operations are the residents, the persons who are going to stay in the building at the end. Agrotree blocks offer 3.5 times higher insulation than conventional materials. Now because of the higher insulation, they don't have to run their ACs and heaters for long periods of time. Now this directly translates into lower emissions in terms of CFCs. It also reduces the amount of electricity consumption and also that means dependence on coal for power generation. And most importantly, because the buildings are also carbon negative, the residents are also comfortable in terms of uh, their impact over sustainability. It's very exciting to know that cost is not really a matter in terms of construction. There have been a lot of studies that have been conducted on understanding what is the cost of building premium or building sustainable. In a lot of cases, people believe that sustainable buildings basically mean that you have to pay premium for construction. But that's actually not the case. Studies have indicate, indicated that in two to three years, you'll be breaking even in terms of whatever investment is made. And because of the sustainable practices that you chose, you're going to actually be saving a lot of money in the long run. And this is very exciting in terms of construction. If all the builders are aware of the fact that this is the kind of impact that it has, we're going to see a lot more uptake in terms of sustainable building materials. The illegal procurement of raw materials continues to be a huge challenge that the government faces, as well as ensuring the supply chain for the building industry too. But then the problem is not that of the industry, but it's actually a problem of policy. How would you want to tax these individuals who are doing such illegal activities? At this current point of time, we do not have a very robust system in terms of understanding what the climate impact of a particular action is. And if until and unless we measure, and each, we measure and account for each impact that it does, we won't be able to create a system that exists which can help us deal with this illegal mining or procurement of raw materials. Now that's a policy challenge that we have to overcome. If the government or any other industry stakeholders are willing to come together and say that these activities are making a reversible impact to this climate, it's that when we realize that, okay, we need to do something about this. A lot of other countries have stated, they have taken actions, for example, to do some of carbon tax uh, for even agricultural activities, for that matter of fact, to understand what this could mean in terms of the climate impact. And this, in, in, in the construction industry, having illegal procurement of raw materials and production directly means there's a lot of emission that come out of the picture. We're talking about the depletion of our natural resources, which is something that we want to ensure that our future generations can have access to. There are a lot of social problems that have to be solved, and there's a need for a lot of solutions. And there currently is a dirt and lack of such solutions. But the biggest challenge that we see in terms of innovation is that it requires too much validation. And though validation is a must, what we need to ensure is that this validation happens at a very accessible price and accessible for the startups. It's a, it's a very closed door circuit at this point of time. We hope that this becomes a little bit more open for all of innovations, for even rural economies to come forward and make a lot of difference. I hope this validation becomes a little bit more accessible for all startups. Thank you.